everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to another sculpting video. If you are new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. In today's video, we're making Frankenstein's monster. Now first of all, if you like my background, I thought I'd make it a little more festive in here and if you can't tell, take Halloween very seriously. I also got a new camera, it's pretty cool. So anyway, I've been receiving requests to make Frankenstein's monster ever since I started my YouTube channel and I've been putting it off until now because I wanted to save something for Halloween. I don't even know what I'm gonna do next year when I have no more monsters left, but anyway, the time has come and we're finally gonna make him. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses that cover dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. A premium membership gives you unlimited access you can enjoy all of the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. I personally am always looking for ways to be more productive and make the most of my time, so I'm drawn to their productivity courses. One that I really like that I just started is called Productivity Masterclass. Create a custom system that works by Thomas Frank. He goes over task management, organizing physical and digital files, how to take and keep notes, and so on and so forth. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable with an annual subscription running about 10 bucks a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link at the top of the description box to get a two month free trial. All right, now let's get this monster mash started. First step, armature. I'm just going to shape out Frankenstein's monster's legs, torso, and shoulders from this 12 gauge aluminum wire. And then I'm going to measure out some more wire for his arms. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. After measuring the arms out and cutting them to size, I'm just going to use some smaller gauge wire to attach them to the shoulders. And now we're going to take some aluminum foil to start bulking out his chest and legs. Then to attach the foil to the wire, I'm just using a little bit of masking tape. And there we go. All right, so instead of just going ahead and adding some Super Sculpey to this right off the bat, I'm gonna cover the entire thing in some Sculpey Ultralight. Sculpey Ultralight, like the name suggests, is an extremely lightweight clay and I'm using it for that reason. This is a fairly large sculpture, I think the largest one I've done so far that's not a thrift store transformation, so I don't want to add a ton of excess weight. Ultralight is also really strong once it's baked and it's really going to secure my armature and make it really easy to add Super Sculpey on top. So 10 out of 10 would recommend, and no, I'm not being paid by Sculpey to say this. This stuff also feels amazing and I could play with it all day. And then when you're doing this step, don't strive for perfection. Just get the clay on there and get it fairly smooth. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. Just make sure you don't have any like huge, you know, valleys and nooks and crannies or whatever. Generally smooth is fine. You're gonna add the clay on top of it and everything's gonna work out great. Okay, now that all the foil areas are coated, we're gonna bake this. Then once it's baked and completely cooled down, we have this nice base to work on. And I think I'm honestly gonna start using this stuff for, I don't know if every sculpture I do from now on, but I'm definitely gonna start using it more often because adding the clay is so easy. It's so much easier than sticking it to foil. Honestly, like I can't recommend it enough. And here, I mean, you can see that Super Sculpey is just adhering perfectly and it gives you a nice, strong, solid base. You're not reshaping the foil as you're adding the clay. So it works great and I'll shut up about it now. <laughs> All right, once everything is covered in clay, it's time to start his shoes. And because I don't wanna make them from one solid piece of clay, cause I don't wanna risk it cracking in the oven, I'm just gonna bulk them out a little bit with some aluminum foil and press that in like so. And then add the clay on top of that. All right, once all the shoes are covered, we're just gonna roll out a snake of clay, pat it flat or semi-flat, 
and then add it to the base of his leg where it meets the shoe. This will create the bottom of his pants. After finishing the other leg off camera, it's time to add some snakes of clay all over the pants to create the folds and wrinkles. And these are snakes of clay that taper at each end that I'm blending in with the rest of the sculpture. One leg down, and one more to go. After finishing the other one off camera, that's looking pretty good. Then we're just going to add some clay for the neck really quick and blend that in, and then start detailing his shirt. First we're going to add the collar, I just ran the clay through my pasta maker on the thickest setting, trimmed it to this size, and then cut out all these little notches and rips, and we're just adding that around his neck, and blending the bottom edge in with everything else. And then I forgot to mention that I did add the skewer to his shoulders before I baked the ultralight when he was covered in ultralight, so that's why that's there. And then now we're just adding some more folds and wrinkles to his shirt. I'm not going to show you this whole process because you already know how I do this. Now it's time to add his jacket over his shirt, and I just cut out that shape from a flat piece of clay, added some rips again and notches at the bottom, and then we're just adding the second one cutting the notches in that one as well, and then attaching it, sort of forming it to his body and trimming it to size. All right, once the basic shape of the coat is on, it's time to add some more snakes of clay that will be folds and wrinkles. And then if you can't tell already, I want this to be a sort of ill-fitting jacket. And then um, I want all of the wrinkles to be coming from where the buttons will be. So it looks like the buttons are sort of pulling. And that's why they're all kind of coming from the same center. Now we're going to repeat this process for the back. Alright, you get the point. Now that his coat's on, we're going to add some lapels. This is just another piece of clay. Again, I added the rips to it, and we're just wrapping it around, cutting it to size, and pressing it in. Now I'm just going to go in with my Explorer tool to sort of fine-tune things a little bit. And then add some buttons. Then to create the indent on each button, I'm just using my large ball stylus to shape them out, and then a little dotting tool to create the little buttonholes. Now I'm going in with my explorer tool to create some seams on the sides of his coat, on his pants, wherever her seams should be. At least I think this is where her seams should be. Then just to get an idea for how he's going to look with a head, stuck that clay on there. Now we're just going to go over all of those seams I just added to add some nice stitching. Then as an added detail, we're just going to give him a nice patch on the side of his jacket and then stitch that on too. Then to finish off this part of his coat, we're going to go in with our explorer tool to add a cross hatching texture here and there to create the look of fabric.
Then for the next step, we're going to brush the entire surface with some clay softener to remove fingerprints. And he's ready for another bake. And then once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time to start his arms. We're just going to bulk these out with some aluminum foil. I want these to be as light as possible because they are going to be sticking out and I don't want them to be weighed down too much and then crack or something. So I want to make them as light as possible. Then I think I'm going to start covering it with Super Sculpey and skip the ultralight step, but I decide not to. The ultralight worked so great for everything else, why would I skip it? So we're just going to cover each arm and then bake him again and then add the Sculpey over the ultralight again. And into the oven he goes. And then while that's baking, we're gonna start his head. Just shaped out the core from some aluminum foil and I'm covering it in Super Sculpey. And then I'm using that block of clay for size reference because remember that's the size I want his head to be. And then for his face, I want to keep it pretty classic. Of course, I'm inspired by Boris Karloff's monster and all that. So like I said, we're going to keep it classic, but still do it in my own style. So I'm going to do the face really quick. There we go. And it's done. Just kidding. Now we're really going to do it and use my large ball stylus to press out his eye sockets. And I'm not going to lie. I had an absolute blast making this guy's face. It was a great face day for me and everything just worked right the first time and i love it when that happens so good stuff oh look who's here to join us the bride of frankenstein and i brought her out because i kind of want because i want her to watch me make him no i'm just kidding um because i want to make sure that i make him look like he goes with her so they're you know they look like they're out of the same movie or universe or whatever you know what i mean i don't want him to be so far removed from her that they don't look like they go together that makes sense. I don't really know any other way to explain it. Kind of like how Jack and Sally look like they go together, but they're still completely different. That's what I want to achieve with these guys. Okay, so after pressing out some of his facial features, I just added some balls of clay for his eyes, and we're just shaping out the mouth area with my spoon tool, and now using my ball stylus to create an indent in between his bottom lip and chin, adding some lower eyelids, shaping those out with my spoon tool, then I'm going to take my ball stylus from Excel Blades, use code of Clay for 10% off at ExcelBlades.com, and I'm just going to make his eyes look a little more sunken, like that. And then I'm going to take another snake of clay to give this guy an exaggerated brow bone. Wow, never done that before, just kidding. Now I'm just using a couple different tools, my double-ended burnisher tool from Excel, and then just sort of blending that brow bone in with the rest of his face. And then I'm going in with my Explorer tool to add a couple more details. Now we're adding a teardrop shape for his nose. I'm going to blend that in with my spoon tool very carefully. And I was totally out of frame when I added the nostrils, I apologize. Now we're just going in and refining a couple areas. I also was out of frame when I put his chin on too. I can't believe I did that. See, I, I, my camera's in a different spot than it normally is and it just th completely threw me off, if you can't tell. Now I'm going in, adding some wrinkles here and there. And we're gonna give him a nice big stitch down his forehead and under his chin. And we're gonna finish that off with some staples, like that, one at a time. Now it's time for his hair. We're just taking this very thin snake of clay, adding it in a zigzag pattern on his head like that. And then once the shape is on, we're gonna use our spoon tool to blend the top edge in with the rest of his head. It's super easy and super effective had to say that at least once.
Now I'm going to take that Explorer tool again and we're going to add a hair texture. Just straight lines all over the hair. And then they're all going to meet at one point on top of his head. That's looking pretty good. All right, now we're gonna put his ears on. Then once his head is done, it's time to brush it with clay softener to remove fingerprints. Then once his head is baking, we're gonna finish off his arms. Then here I'm just adding some Super Sculpey on top of that ultralight. And again, I just loved this process, I swear. You gotta try it if you get the chance. Once both arms are covered, it's time to go in and add some folds and wrinkles to those too. Poof. And just like that, they're both done. And now it's time to make his hands. And I struggled with the size of the hands. Um, it took me a good like half an hour to do the first one. Not gonna lie, just because I needed to make sure they weren't too big or too small. So. I just, as you can see, I'm trimming the heck out of him, trying to get it the right size, and I put his head on to make sure, you know, it was proportionate to his head, and all that. And I mean, he is a really exaggerated figure, but, you know, it has to look like it's on purpose, not like you messed up, if that makes sense. Now we're just going to detail his hands a little bit more, add some knuckles and joints, some wrinkles here and there. It makes a huge difference. Now we're gonna press in some fingernails. And add some veins. These added so much to the hands, I couldn't believe it. I really like how they turned out. Then with a little bit of bacon bond, we're just gonna stick the hand on, fill in some missing areas of clay, and then add the end of the sleeves, just like we did with his collar and lapels, end of his jacket. Time for the other one. And they're both done. Awesome. Now we're just going to make the bolts on his neck. At one point before I baked him, I did add the wire to support these. And then I, after it was baked, I did have to trim off some of the cured clay from his neck because his head would be sticking out way too far. And I did this with an X-Acto knife. If you do decide to cut or carve your clay after it's baked, be careful because you could, you know, make it crack a way that you don't want it to. So just be careful if you're doing that. Then here we're just adding some more seams to his jacket some more stitching just thought it needed another detail there and there and that's looking pretty good time to brush all of the uncured areas with clay softener to remove fingerprints add some more of a cross hatching texture here and there and he's ready for another bake and then after attaching his head and baking him again off camera it's time for paint we're gonna start with this nice very dark brown color for his pants and all of the paints that I use in this video are Folk Art brand matte acrylics, metallics, or varnishes. Then once the base coat of dark brown is dry, we're just going to go in with some darker brown into all of the crevices on him, just to add a little bit of shading. 
some more depth and dimension. Then we're going to go in with some lighter brown and dry brush this on the surface to pick up all of the details. And then before we start his jacket, I just want to paint his skin and his face and all that, get that out of the way. To create this green color, I mixed fresh fern, coastal blue, pure black, and brown together. And I believe buttermint. Yes, I added buttermint too. Now we're just darkening that color a little bit and watering it down to create this nice shading color for all of the recessed areas of his face. Like that. And then we're going to go over that once everything's dry with some lighter green to highlight some areas. Now I'm going to paint his eyes with some straight up buttermint. And then give him tiny irises and pupils with a very small dotting tool and pure black. Now I'm going in with some pure magenta into all of his wrinkles around his face just to give it some more dimension. Now it's time to paint his jacket. We're just going to go in with pure black over the entire thing. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm just going to take some brown and add it to the surface onto all of the raised areas to bring out the details again. And I'm working the same way as I do when I dry brush, there's just more paint on my brush this time. Now we're going to go in and paint all of the stitches black. Now I'm going to go in with some lighter brown to paint the patch on his chest. And then I'm going to add a black wash over all of his pants just to darken them a little bit. And to create a wash, this is just acrylic paint mist mixed with water. Now we're going to go in with some black and paint his hair. Then paint his shoes brown, going in with a semi-dark brown color, and then going on top of that with a lighter brown. And then for the final step, we're going to glaze his eyes and the buttons on his jacket. And he's done! Frankenstein's monster is complete. Let me know how you think I did in the comments, and then if you use any of the tips and techniques that I use in this video on your own projects, share them to Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, and tag me at Ace of Clay or hashtag Ace of Clay so I can check them out. That's a wrap. I really hope you like how Frankenstein's monster turned out. Let me know what you think in the comments and then be sure to like and subscribe. And then if you want more content, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.